JavaScript is known as a language that is full of quite a few weird conditions. Bruh. I mean, a lot of weird conditions. Yet somehow people keep using JavaScript for everything. I mean, everything. And I have actually been using JavaScript for quite some time now. I've been using it for about 10 years professionally off and on throughout that time. And I am going to give you the top five things that have bit me harder than anything else in JavaScript. Just for you. And no, it's not going to be around this and bind. It's not going to be about variable hoisting. It's not going to be about let dead zones. No, 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 no. We're actually going to get into some things that can really shoot you in the foot properly. Number five, of course, is going to be actually kind of like a double foot gun. First off, it is just regex is the ultimate foot gun in any programming language. But secondly, in JavaScript, if you have the G flag at the end, the global matching flag, it will actually keep state. So if you call test, it will match the first occurrence. If you call test again, and there is not a second occurrence, it will actually result in a false being returned. As you can see right here, this is totally crazy, right? Like you would expect it to say true, true. True, true, but instead it actually flops back and forth. And that is simply because that regex actually keeps state. Of course, I get the idea. This is pretty classic JavaScript. They're always too clever by half, and it always makes it extremely difficult to reason about their APIs. And in this top five list, this won't be the only too clever by half that's gonna happen. And of course, please don't use regexes, okay? Just, just, just try to avoid them. One time I actually did commit to the Netflix code base a while back, a regex for matching emails, and you wanna guess what happened? Yeah, it was incorrect, okay? Stop! It's a disaster. All right, so number four is actually something that has bit me several times. And uh, this is mostly when I've been building some network protocols, WebSocket, HTTP2, just something that is terrible and it will get you and you just have no idea that it's getting you for a while. All right, so here's the example. The first thing I do is create a function in which I'll create a buffer that is about the size 10. From there, I'm gonna set the first five values to the greatest number in the universe and the cost of one Tesla. From there, I'm gonna log out the value, then create a second buffer that is a slice off the first one and simply set one of the values on B, then reprint out A. Now, if you don't know what's gonna happen there, B is actually a shallow copy of A, so therefore B sub zero equals six will actually replace the four in the original 69, 420, so it becomes 69, 620. Now, this is great for performance. It's fantastic because you're not creating actually large allocations by accident or anything, but that's not where the foot gun is at. So the thing about buffers is that they're also uint eight arrays by type. Now, that is very insidious because the fact is, is that if I create a slice from a uint eight array, I'm creating a deep copy. But since I've passed in a buffer, it's actually creating a shallow copy. And as of right now, TypeScript does not actually give you any sort of warning when this happens. The one nice part is that if you're just using buffers, TypeScript will warn you, hey, this is kind of a goofy API, it's being deprecated. But it does not warn you right here. And this will bite you in the ass. I cannot tell you the time I spent chasing down that bug. It was painful. Number three, of course, is going to be iterating over maps. When iterating over a map with a for of statement, you will get key then value. Of course, this is very natural and appears in pretty much every single language ever. But if you decide to use a for each, you will actually get value then key. Why does JavaScript have to do this? Why do you have to make terrible decisions? Why? Why would you do that? That is why I prefer to write in the Lord's language. The greatest language, of course, ever written. Rust. Oh, it's so beautiful. Bruh. Number two is going to be uh, just a, just a one that's going to just really just, oh, it just makes me so upset. It really throws you off when debugging, especially if you're doing anything with networks. So first, let's create a number that is going to be, let's make it 10 billion long. If I add one to A, I get 10 billion and one. But if I logical or that thing, I don't get it at all. What the heck just happened right there? What happens is that when you do a bitwise operation to a number, it casts it to a 32-bit number, not just an unsigned one. No, 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 no. JavaScript picked a signed one, which literally means that if we do 0x1 and we push it over by 30, 
you'll get a large positive number. But if we just push it over one more, you get a very negative number. And when you're doing things that involve a network protocol and you see something like this, you're like, what the hell? What number am I even looking at? Well, you're looking at the 32nd bit of a signed 32-bit integer. Come on, dummy. <laughs> or don't do that. Dude, you could just bra her again. Bruh. <laughs> Dude, it's getting so good. Bruh. And of course, number one has to go to the tweet that actually ratioed me here. Ken Wheeler, Canvas Daddy, Beat Master, Beat Me Daddy. <laughs> Of course, is the community, the community that just rewrites everything faster than Rust people can rewrite things. We're even doing it with machine learning. What is going on? JavaScript? The thing about JavaScript is, it, you know, I don't hate JavaScript. It's just somehow going everywhere, even to places it shouldn't be going. And the thing is, is that JavaScript, yeah, sure, it's slow. Sure, it's memory inefficient. Sure, it's filled with sharp edges everywhere, including equality, type coercion, weird ass APIs that just make no sense. And of course, some of the things I just got done showing you. But you know what? I still kind of like the language. It's a very simple language and I can get some things done fairly quick on small items. But the enthusiasm to put it everywhere is just mind boggling to me. It's okay. You can use other things. It's fine. I'm going to use other things. It's okay. I've written some really complex JavaScript. So it's not that I'm sitting here with uh, no experience. As someone who's currently writing something that is just ridiculously hard right now for Netflix, I'm okay using it when it makes sense. And in my case, it makes sense because it's driving another JavaScript engine. My goodness, you guys, look at this thing. We're so dang close. I'm so excited. Hey, thank you for all the subs. Oh, we're getting very, very close close to that 100,000. I'm going to take that silvery plaque when I get it. I'm going to lick it from tippity top to bottom. That, of course, will go on the OnlyFans page. If you have any weird JavaScript ones that I didn't even catch in there, let me know down below. I don't want to hear about, like, type coercion. Yeah, I know that an empty string equals zero, whatever nonsense that goes on there. But I want something that's just truly insidious. If you have one, let me know down below. Hey, thank you so much for watching. My name is The Primogen. What? You don't know what the primogen means? Well, if you knew the backstory, it actually makes a lot of sense.